last week on The Pulse. You know what I'm saying? Don't just sit soft because they'll go seven, one, two, three, and they'll try to get the burger. So I think there's improvement in understanding, there's improvement of just fundamentals, and then there's an improvement of technique-wise, uh, just how to execute whatever that technique is on a down-in and down-out basis. Starkle rolls that way, throws back over the middle, intercepted! Intercepted! Justin Matabike puts the shoulder down and comes back to the 16! Is there nothing he can do? Sundays are very good, just good times to rest, good times to just relax and unwind at your own home and put things together and, you know, try to, you know, put it all together and clear your brain and relax, you know, watch the football, NFL, take your mind off of everything. Since the day Justin Matabike stepped on campus, he's been one of the Aggie defense's most disruptive forces. This season is no different. Well, I think mean, he's gifted. He has physical abilities. In other words, he has size, he has speed, the things I talked about. He has twitch, he has power. He can generate power in a short area. He can explode, whether it's running, creating power with his arms or fit the physicality in which he has. He's just like a freak of nature. Like, he's a, he's a man amongst boys, really. He's fast, you know, he's strong, he's violent. He's strong, <laughs> but yeah, he's good. And he's got a great motor on him too. He's very smart and you know, he, he knows his advantages he have over his opponent. So I think that's something to help him. And he watch film all the time, so he have a, 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 a bigger advantage over him. So that's something big for him. But Justin may not even be the best Matabike in Aggieland. His roommate is in the running. Uh, my roommate is my sister, Joy Matabike. She runs track here and uh, we got a little town home and you know, it's pretty sweet. It's huh. very family oriented. So typically we mostly we make smoothies on Sundays just to kick off our week. Um, all energized just to stay focused and stay lean. It's always good to stay consistent with your nutrients. So just as student athletes it's always important to stay on top of things. Uh, he's he's a good roommate. He's He's good. Um, I don't know, because I'm completely scared of like insects. Like I hate bugs. And Justin, he's like, he's fearless. Like he doesn't care. Like he would just kill a huge cockroach. Like and I'll like scream, you know. It's a little chunky. <laughs> <laughs> I need to add a little bit of milk in there. Just give this um, liquidity. Yeah, that's good. Is that all of it? You yeah, might as well finish it all. Like, I always help her out with like, if there's like a bug in her room or like things things need to be moved or like, she comes back from like SEC track and field events and stuff. She has all these bags of like free stuff and like I always carry it to her room for her. I think she just say good things. Maybe I'm annoying or something. I don't know. Maybe I like try to get in her business too much. You know, I'm older, bro. She's my only sister, so I'm always like, you know, like, watch out, cause. He's pretty protective. Uh, I try to tell him to calm down sometimes because he can be a little too protective. You know, I can protect myself sometimes, you know. But um, it's good that he's protective. It shows that he cares, you know. So um, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. So my dad, he played, he actually ran track in high school um, for the University of Nigeria. And I have two uncles who uh, played professional soccer for Nigeria. So, and they all went to the University of Nigeria. So. I have, we have pretty athletic jeans in my dad's side. It's ready. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, my need mine. Let's get it. The berries. Gotta hit that cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my Whoa. God. Perfect blend. Strawberry banana. Yo. <laughs> right there. This is perfect. Uh -huh. Wow. Oh, yeah, this is A1.
little old Shipley donuts. Yes, sir. Life's not always sweet as a freshman. Growing pains are involved, but several first-year Aggies are making their mark. Toss right side, and Aya Smith gains on his feet at the five. And Aya Smith tackled into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies! And the first touchdown as an Aggie for Anaya Smith. On the end around on the right side, Aggies are right there. The Marvin Leal with the tackle. Really, freshmen, it's not about making mistakes. It's just they got to know they're going to get beat sometimes, especially who we're playing against, you know. Some of these guys could be 23 years old, and you're 18 years old. There's some man strength. There's four years difference, four or five years. Obviously, it's, you know, really hard for someone as a freshman to come in, but even as a guy who didn't even come in as a mid-year, you know, came in in the summer. Uh, it's obviously super hard and, you know, learning the offense and just to see his growth and, uh, you know, in the pass game and the run game has, you know, been really well for us. Are you preparing to play or are you, like, waiting to play? Like, I swear, that's, that's, so, that's so big because Anaya is, like, prepared to play. He's a professional. He knew the whole playbook when he first got here. So he's sitting here telling us things that I didn't know about the playbook. So he showed you he, he would be on the field when he when it was time. He's a young, young tight end who's getting better in the blocking part of it. You know, was always flexed out in high school more so, and now he's learned to be connected and do those things. But you see the skill parts of his game can get vertical for a 6'5", 255-pound guy. Has really good verticality and athleticism and ball skills, I think, has a tremendous future. Good. The physicality, as I say, going being an 18-year-old guy going against a 21, 22-year-old grown man, is very tough and I mean you know he's had some tough moments but he's had a lot of really good ones and battled some and played some really really good uh, people who are going to be high first round draft picks I mean this, this guy's got indoctrinated very quickly. Kenan does a good job not saying that he's going to get beat or make a mistake but just going to the next play you know he might do something but he goes to the next play immediately and scratches that one off that's what makes him pretty special as a freshman. For his, his size and his strength at that age is like you don't really see that all the time. Just the way you can move, and we all talk about it too, like he probably moves the best out of any of us. You know, he got hurt early there, had to hang in a couple things going on. Now he's in the practice, he's doing well. The Simons are coming to weather, and Lee Al is gonna be everything we think too. I think he's playing really good football and learning how to play and got a great future. Damani's progressing, he's becoming a lot more of a student of the game by just listening and he's really applying it more on the field. And, you know, um, he's, he's just, he just makes a lot, of, a lot of plays that we see in practice that a lot of people don't see, you just go, wow. Those guys are the quarterbacks for your defense. They're having to make the checks and do those things. So that's a lot on him mentally and physically. He definitely, you know, he's going to be a really good. I mean, he tackles, he can run, tackle in space, has physicality. These new faces will go against an old college football staple Saturday. Despite their youth, They'll have to be ready. The Pulse Texas A&M football is brought to you by Gritty. It's a whole new way to buy power. And Pepsi, the official soft drink of Texas A&M football. <laughs> You got all the tools to be successful. You got your, your toolbox is full. It's a matter of using them, knowing how to use them, wanting to use them, and use them the right way, and, and don't vary from them. It's that simple, guys. Mostly you know what to do, physically you know what to do, psychologically you know what to do, technique you know what to do, 
But at the end of the day, it's going to get down to my attitude, my religious pursuit, that I am refusing to be denied in everything you got. You got to get some energy. You got to have some eye, eye contact with guys. You got to have an attitude. You got to picture yourself having success. So when it happens, it doesn't shock you. And you don't let up. You don't get relief, you reload. Each and every play, we're just reloading each and every play. Reload back. Lock yourself back in one play. Guys, one play at a time, it's all you can control. That's it. Process the good and bad afterwards and go to the next one. That's the most important play. If something good doesn't happen, good. Minimize the damage. Process it. Don't let one become two. If something real good happens, act like you've been there. Get excited, be happy, go make another play. If you don't visualize it, don't believe it, it can't happen. See it? Let it happen. It's our day. It's our day today. A&M gets the ball first and looks to start fast. Spiller around the right end, pulls that pile ahead to the 39-yard line, dragging Shane Lee. Hand off Spiller, up the middle, first down and more, across midfield, into Alabama territory. Isaiah Spiller, a 12-yard gain. Mon looks right, fires complete across the 40 to the 38-yard line. First down for the Aggies, that pass complete to Jamon Osmond. Kellen takes the snap, fires left side, complete. Spiller, 25-20, in front of the Alabama sideline to the 15. He puts the shoulder down and gets another yard. Give Kellen, fake, left side, avoids a tackle, cuts back to his right, inside the five, all the way to the one, Kellen Bond. The last nine yards was all Kellen. Here's that tempo, Kellen under center, keeper, touchdown! Aggies, Kellen with the plunge. Aggies strike first on their initial drive. Great job. Great job. Great job. An eight-minute drive to begin has Kyle Field rocking, but number one doesn't wobble. Two Bama scores put them in front. Now the Aggies must steady themselves. Fake the handoff. Kellen rolls right. Pressure is coming. Stays out of pressure. Throws on the run. Got Jermon across midfield to the 44-yard line. Complete Aggies in Crimson Tide territory. At the 47-yard line. Slant caught. Q across the 40. He's got the first down. 14-yard gain. This is a third and 10. Pressure from the outside. Throw to the right sideline. Q goes up and makes the catch at the 16. He was double teamed and just got higher than everyone. A 31-yard field goal. The snap and hold are good, and so is the kick by Seth Small. With the kickoff towards the left side, fielded in front of the tee in the end zone, Henry Ruggs brings it out to the 10, 20, right side, gets past some of the defenders. Great man takes him down and fumbled the ball, and he recovered it. Texas A&M has it because of the Ray Guy Award winner. Reviews, the runner was down with the score on touching the ground at the 38-yard line. Braden Mann almost makes a play. The inches and bounces are falling Bama's way. They use the brakes and start to roll. Who will step up to stem the tide? The snap to Tua. Looking left, looking middle, cross the middle. Intercepted! Intercepted and taken out of the end zone to the 10. Damani Richardson, the Aggies get the turnover. And Damani Richardson, what a time for his first career INT. Kellen takes the snap. Slant caught, 30, 31-yard line, complete to Anaya Smith, who makes his first catch of the game. Kellen rolls to his right, throws back to his left, complete. Anaya Smith, first down, stays on his feet, now down at the 34-yard line, 11-yard gain for the Aggies. 43 seconds left. Steps up, throws, bobbled, caught, spiller, race, left sideline to the 30s, out of bounds. Seth has hit a 31-yard field goal. He boots this one and bangs it through. 24-13. Here at the half at Kyle Field. Guys, you can do it right here. Go play your game. Defense, go out and get a stop. Everything we have is self-inflicted wounds we're having. Now, they're a good team, but we are too. When we do it right, you're up and down the field with them in every play. Stay locked in. If you don't believe it, it ain't going to happen. Just look when you do it right. They... They ain't been in these tight games like you have. 
I used to doing this, everybody backing up to him. It's a big play to stay in the half. Another one to go down and get points before the half. That was huge, guys. You got a great heart, but your head's got to match your heart, your intelligence, and your consistency, and your toughness. Mental and physical to execute on every play. Do what we do. Be who we are. Okay? Grow up right here. Go play 30 minutes of football and see what the hell might happen. You might just surprise the hell out of yourself. Oh, sir, it's a hell of a football team. Let's go, let's, go, let's, go, let's, go, let's go finish this thing. Let's go, man. Finish on three. One, two, three. Let's go. Tua fakes the handoff, rolls to his right, and Aaron Hansford has him back at the 15-yard line. That's 10-yard sack. He was coming on the blitz, got a quick path to Tua and held on, kept him from escaping, and he'll take him down back at the 15-yard line. Great job, defense. Third and goal from the nine. Tua, pocket, Tua looking right, Tua firing on a slant, incomplete, and what a hit! Oh, baby! That hit delivered by Damani Richardson. Boy, he's having a great game. That freshman safety came in on the end route, hit him in the hands, and Damani hit him just after the ball got there. Good job. Jimbo had the Ags fired up. The D held Alabama to a field goal to start the second half. A&M would get the ball, looking to make it a one-possession game. Aggies have a bunch formation to the left of the line. In motion from left to right goes Kendrick Rogers. Kellen from the pistol. Jamon with a catch at the 30, a five-yard gain for Jamon Osmond. But as he says, pull the pin, leave no doubt, slant too far for Q. That's incomplete, let him too much. Third and six, Kellen pulls it down, and he's down at the 26-yard line. Did a good job of not having that a fumble because he had his right arm hit. And now Braden Mann's going to have to punt. A huge missed opportunity. Bama's impressive receiving core would make A&M pay. The Henry Ruggs touchdown catch extended their lead to 34-13. But the Aggies will not give up. The snap to Kellen, fake to Isaiah. Steps up in the pocket. Kellen rolls to his left, avoids Raekwon Davis, gets across the 30, to the 35. Kellen then dives ahead to the 39-yard line, a 21-yard gain. The snap comes from the left hash. Steps up, avoids, throws, complete across midfield, Courtney Davis. Kellen from the pistol and from the pocket. A oh, beautiful pass to Q, up just over the linebacker, Terrell Lewis, complete to the 25-yard line. Fake the jet sweep to him. Kellen, over the middle, wide open. He's got Weidemeyer for the touchdown. 25-yard touchdown toss to Weidemeyer, touchdown. All right, it's a seam route to Weidermeyer, the tight end. He just goes right straight ahead up the seam. Oh, you pull the job! And off. It's hit by Anthony Hines, and it's cleaned up by Tyreek Johnson. Oh, Hines with great penetration for the Aggies. Deep to the left, chased by Matabike. Throw to Judy, it's too wide and complete. Marco Bailoa had time to throw. He just could not find anybody downfield. Had to throw it away, and the Aggies are going to get this ball back on a punt. The snap to Kellen. Fake the spiller. Rolls to his right and fires on the run. Incomplete. Intended for Kendrick Rogers. That coverage by Alabama's Trayvon Diggs. Oh, we just got a flag. Is it going to be on Rogers? I think I'm, saying, I'm afraid so, but I'm afraid he said something. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. Self-inflicted wounds would be costly. The A&M offense stalled. Alabama kept moving. The third phase was the first factor in this one. The Tide's special team's dominance continued with a score on a blocked punt. But again, the Aggies do not quit. Kellen, he's gonna run it up the middle across midfield to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, still on his feet. Kellen Mond inside the 20 yard line. Kellen throws for that tight end. Weidemeyer caught it. Touchdown, Aggies! Boy, that's a terrific throw. Xavier McKinney, the free safety, is over there on getting covered, but Kellen threw it over his head. Boy, that's a good play there. The scoreboard shows this team fell short. 
But on this afternoon, they went long on intensity, physicality, and toughness. It's this kind of effort that will lead to future success. The Pulse Texas A&M Football is brought to you by Gritty. It's a whole new way to buy power. And Pepsi, the official soft drink of Texas A&M Football. You know, guys, play your hearts out today. Have no, we got some tough suckers, guys that are competitive. But we've got to learn. There's a final step to this thing. Guys, we're close. But those last steps are the one because they get right here between the ears, learning how to play certain plays, certain momentum swings of the game, how to take advantage and come back over those things. We made plays. You look at the numbers, I mean, the numbers are close. But understanding the situations, when they are, the momentum of the game, the timing of the game, and playing with more consistency. We have to play with consistency in all facets. And it ain't about heart. It ain't about want to. It's about got to. There's a point in it when you get back to it. It don't matter. I'm going to do it. It don't matter. I'm going to do it. And it's a, it's a mentality and it's a momentum that comes when you play. Guys, we got a very, we, we see it. We still make some good plays. We did some good things. Offense, defense, even special teams. We had some breakdowns on special teams. We got to look at that. Our coverage teams, we didn't cover very well today, guys. We got one blocked. I missed Mr. Simon up there. Got to get that cleaned up. We can't have, we had too many self-inflicted wounds to allow you to be the number one team in the country. They, they're, they're a good team. But we can do the same things if our attention to detail is there and our desire and our toughness and things are there. I mean, it's not, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying there's another level we can push to right there that if you'll trust us and let us get you there, we can have a hell of a season down the run right here. You lined up with the best. We've got, we played the best of the best. And every time you've walked in, you've said the same thing. So when do we make that change? You understand what I'm saying? It's a mental psychological change of taking this program to another level. And we're going to finish this year off. We're 3-3 three and three right now, halfway through. We're going right back in the middle of this thing, and we're going to play our tails off for these last six ball games. and you might just surprise the hell out of yourself and watch yourself grow and take off. we got some young guys on this team, and I'm tired of having that same conversation, I know. But it's time, and it, but it's, until it goes to the practice field, guys, it's not going to go to the game field. So don't hang your head. You dad going to you ought to hurt, and you ought to be disappointed. I am. For something I could have done to put you in a better position to make a play, Better whatever to help. It's all of us. It's not any old players. It's all of us. We're one family. But we're not that far. But if we don't understand how to take that next step, we're always going to be the same distance. There's a great group in here. Let's just find that way to get there. Because I know when you walk off that field, you're, you respect them. But you don't look at them and say, that we, we can't play with those if we play our best. If we play our best, we're right there with them. That's no disrespect to them. It's respect to us. One half of the season down, another half to go. That equals a whole lot of ball left to be played. I mean, we had some t really tough games, some opportunities. I'm anxious to see how we develop the back half of the season. Do we get improved and take the lessons we learned? And can we take that and, and, and go benefit from it and get a big win on the road? We're competing. We just got to understand how to compete and, and feed off of each other better. I keep saying that when you get momentum swings how to capitalize in certain situations, and we got to do it with much more consistency. But yeah, I mean, there's a want to there. There's a desire. We're not quitting. We're, we're playing with good toughness and things of that nature. You just got to do it more consistently with better technique so we can get better results.